What it is, what it do, cyber world. It's your girl, the one, the only. Ash said it. Ash said it radio. Yes, we are all the way live today. We've got a treat, you guys. We have the one and only Judah. Judah is is in the building. What's up, Judah, brother? What's up, Ash? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you doing this day? I'm doing wonderful. It's a beautiful day in Atlanta, and I'm just enjoying the weather, man. Just having fun. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I know that you've got a tight schedule. You've got a lot of things going on, but I definitely wanted to touch bases with you on a couple of things. All right. Cool beans. All right, Judah, so tell everybody where you're from, what city you represent. So I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I was born in a small suburb called uh, Rockdale County. And I grew up in Rockdale, then I moved to Newton, which is Covington, and that's about 25, 30 minutes east of Atlanta, and then now I live in the city. And I, I love this city, man. I've always been a, a Southern boy, and, and I'm, I'm proud of it. Absolutely. So who were some of your musical influences growing up? Well, for me, you know, I was I was lucky enough to grow up in a home where we were exposed to all types of genres. So um, even the old school, like Beatles, uh, you know, some Michael Jackson, some uh, <laughs> all the way to Parliament. And then if you, you know, fast forward to the 90s, which is when I was kind of growing up, I listened to a lot of Nirvana, a lot of Rage Against the Machine, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Sublime. And as far as hip-hop goes, I- I've always been a big Outkast fan. You know, they, they kind of shake yes. hip-hop. Especially <laughs> for Atlanta, they put us on the map. And, uh, you know, I have some other hip-hop influences. But m- me, musically, I look at music like <laughs> mood. It's whatever mood you're in, whatever mood you want to be in. And it influences me. So, I, you know, it depends on the day. Sometimes it's a... Uh, it's a funk day. Sometimes it's a hip hop day. Sometimes it's an acoustic day. But uh, it depends on where I'm at. Definitely, definitely. So, for you, what was the turning point to really delve into going into music? Well, you know, I was about five years old when my parents uh, put me into piano lessons, and I started learning piano. And honestly, I hated it when I was first there because I was like, "Dude, I do not want to go to this lesson and talk to these people." And uh, <laughs> Now I love it. I love the fact that I that they basically forced me to learn um, because now I can you know I can make money with it. I can record with it. I can produce. And so when I was twelve years old, that's when I first formed a band, and I had that band for about six years. We released a few albums, and so I'm, I'm now twenty five. I've been doing it for about thirteen years on an official level, and uh, you know I've been traveling the country and touring and stuff ever since I was a kid. Cool, cool beans. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about songwriting. You know, every artist has a different style as far as songwriting. What is Judas' songwriting style? Well, for me, it depends. You know, it, 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 there's times where I write the lyrics first. I get an inspiration for, you know, a certain message I want to convey. And then we put music to it. But there's other times where I'll, I'll get a track from a producer or, or I'll produce a track. And then I'll add lyrics. Um, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I can get a melody. Like, I'll just know, like what I want it to sound like, but I don't know exactly the words yet. So it comes in different ways. But I think as long as you're being inspired and as long as you're able to convey your message, you know, it doesn't matter really how you put it out um, as long as it comes together at the end of the day. So, But for me, more often times than not, like if you went through my phone, you'd hear some crazy memos. You know what I mean? Like I record like <laughs> in my iPhone like all day. I'll get like a little like that, 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 and I'll just record it. And then like later on, I'll put some lyrics to it. But then sometimes you have a specific message where it's like, this is what I want to say, and later on I'll add a melody. Gotcha, gotcha. So do you take a lot of your personal experience and put them into song? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, writing songs is just like writing anything else. It's, you know, when you when you write a book, you might write nonfiction, you might write a biography or an autobiography, but you also might write some fiction. So, uh, you know, in my songs, I like to explore things that I have not experienced sometimes, but... For the most part, I do like to write about my own experience, my own life uh, struggles and the things that I, that I love, the things that, I, that challenge me. And I think music should reflect your message. It should reflect what you're about. It should reflect uh, how you live and what you want to convey to the world. And so for me, um, you know, sometimes we'll make a dance song or, or just a love song, but I try to, to write music that has substance. And that doesn't always mean that it's Christian, but that it that it that it speaks to someone and that it is a positive message. And to me, if it's not negative, it's positive. So as long as it's not degrading how, you know, a lot of hip hop is these days, um, as long as it's not degrading and it's lifting someone up or at least not tearing them down, 
then I'm all good with it. Absolutely. Now, I've seen uh, some of your stuff in action. I've seen some YouTube videos. I've seen your energy, and I love it. It's electric. It's it's very contagious in a great, great way. So from where you're at now to maybe, you know, we'll rewind to maybe your first live performance. What did you take from, from those experiences? Well, my first live performance, I was 12. Uh, with my band, and, you know, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Like, our <laughs> microphone was, like, feedbacking like crazy. Like, Wee! It was crazy, man. And uh, my, my guitarist, like, forgot to turn his volume up. Like, it was just ridiculous Aww. stuff. And uh, the crowd, you know, the crowd was gracious on us, but it was still, like, just a really hard night. Yeah. Um, we didn't know our stuff as well because, you know, we were younger. Yeah. And what I learned from that, from that time was, you know, I said to my dad afterwards, I was like, you know, we need to do better next time because he, you know, he said, he was like, dude, I, I want you to continue to do this, but I understand it's, you know, it's not, if you're not cut out for it because if you're in the entertainment industry, you've got to have thick skin. Yeah. And so when you're a kid, especially kids can be brutal. So our first performance was not that fun. You know, we, we weren't, we weren't that good, but we had a lot of heart. We had a lot of passion. And, uh, now you, we fast forward 13 years and you just learn from practice. You learn from trial and error. And I'm not perfect, but I, I definitely have seen myself go, uh, not just as a musician, but as a writer and as a performer. And I think that, uh, you know, doing countless uh, festivals and shows and showcases and all the way back to open mics and even just performing at, like, a Mexican restaurant with three people, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just wherever people would take me, that's where I would go. And when you do that enough times, eventually you learn and you, you develop your craft. And... Uh, I think you're instilled with a gift inside of you, but you have to work on that. You have to sharpen it. And that's what I've done throughout the years. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about ministry. Let's talk about the ministry and let's talk about music. So the two worlds, how were they able to collide? Well, for me, music is my ministry and ministry uh, is part of my music. And it's kind of, they both, have always uh, been connected. They've never been mutually exclusive. Okay. Um, I look at everything that I do in my life as ministry. So even if I'm if I'm just if I'm at a bar somewhere and I'm talking to the bartender, uh, that's a chance to minister to somebody. Now, th- does that mean that I'm you know having them confess Jesus Christ? No, not necessarily. But just loving on somebody, helping them know that they're not alone, helping them know that their life matters. And sometimes you don't even have to be that deep. Just be in the light. Just be in the light in the darkness. And so for me. When I do music, my light shines. If I do business, my light shines. If I'm preaching, my light shines. But it doesn't matter where I'm at. It matters who you are, and it matters what you're about. And so um, no matter if I've been in music or ministry, I just try to be the light. And so it's always connected because anything that I do, I'm going to shine the light in. And I don't even think, like I said, I don't think it's necessarily a conscious thing that you do. You know, it's not that you have to walk in every room and say, all right, I'm going to speak to everybody's life, and you can change the world, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Sometimes you do that, but... Sometimes it's literally just a hug. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's just a hand, you know, a high five. Sometimes it's just a, hey, how you doing today, man? I'm thinking about you. I love you. Uh, keep pushing. Don't give up, you know. And just mm-hmm. being that light for somebody, whether it's music or ministry, I think is what I'm all about. Absolutely. So we've got some questions coming in, Judah. I'm, I'm checking the emails. Kimberly McRae yeah. wants to know, do you have plans for a tour? Hmm. Yeah, we're actually putting together um, some dates right now. Uh, I've got my own tour I'm putting together, but I'm also in talks with Kenton Jones, which is one of my castmates Mm -hmm. on Preachers of Atlanta. And uh, we're talking about some uh, dates that we can do together as well. So there's a lot coming up. Um, We'll be releasing that. And uh, you can go to my website at officialjuda.com, and we'll be uploading all the tour schedules and stuff like that. Absolutely. Okay, Judah, so let's jump into Preachers of Atlanta. Now, Atlanta right. has become, you know, the mecca of just from reality TV to movies and music videos. All these different industries are here now in the ATL. Why Preachers of Atlanta? Because I know that you more than likely have been approached multiple times by different companies and possibly different studios about doing a reality show. What about this show yeah. spoke to you? Yeah, you know, uh, Preachers was like the 10th show that's trying to happen either between me or my family. And, you know, we've had everybody from, well, I've all named the production companies, but we've had some large production companies that have done, you know, all the mainstream shows, and they've tried to do things with us. And, you know, we were interested in some of them, and we tried, 
but it kind of just flopped, you know, whether you just fizzle or, or talk to this producer or that network. And um, I think that that was ultimately God holding me back for this moment. Mm. And so when I met the producers of this show, at first I was a little skeptical only because I've already talked to so many producers. I, I, honestly, I just didn't take them serious. I was like, dude, we'll see. You know, we'll see when it happens, yeah. and I'll believe it when I see it, type thing. Um, but what what was so attractive to me is that it's an ensemble, and, it, and so it's not just a magnifying glass on my life individually, right. but I can be a part of a team. And I think that that's a great way to be introduced into the television industry, because I've always wanted to be in television. But if someone calls you and says, hey, we want to come film what you're already doing in ministry and music and put it on television, you're like, yeah, of course, let's do that. You know, that sounds great. So. Right. It's just really a door for me to get in and to be a part of a team that is that is dynamic and that is a, a, a well-known brand and a well-respected brand. And that, that gets me in the door. And once I'm in the door, I'm never coming out, man. I've got <laughs> ideas for the future. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pitch those ideas when the time comes. But for now, I think this moment is, is where I'm supposed to be. Absolutely. And I have to say that I've, I've checked out a couple of episodes and... I, I have to say that I like the way that you stand your own. You're probably the youngest one on the cast. And I mean, yeah, yeah, really, yeah. you hold your own. You're not intimidated by anyone. You're going to let your voice heard. And I really, um, it really warmed my heart to see that. So go, Judah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm a fifth generation pastor. So, like, yeah. everybody in my family has done church. And we've done it for decades upon decades. So it's in my blood to do this. And, you know, I've, I've, I've dealt with uh, animosity my whole life. I've mm-hmm. dealt with rejection. I've dealt with people that, that treat you like you're nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to learn how to hear those voices and let it build you up. And even if they're a pastor or if they're a co-mate, uh, you know, a castmate on a show, you have to learn how to know who you are. Right. And so there, no matter what they say to you, that will never define you. And you can stand your ground, but you can also build a bridge. And, you know, mm-hmm. my, my whole thing is to be a bridge builder. I don't want to be... Uh, divisive. I want to find common ground with someone and, and, and to say that we don't have to agree on every little point to love each other and to, to, to be effective for our community. So even with my co-stars, like, I don't have to agree with everything they say. They don't have to agree with everything I say, but we can still come together and feed the hungry. We can clothe the naked. We can visit those that are sick and those that are in prison. We can do the things that Jesus actually, actually talked about mm-hmm. rather than argue all the time. But I do think it's effective to present different sides to the gospel. And, you know, I'm always going to present mine. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, um, like you were saying, I really like the aspect of it's all of the, all of the castmates. Uh, it's a very un, unconventional, untraditional way of, of ministry. Everyone, everyone has their own separate way of reaching people, which I think is still effective, you know, and it's not always, sure. it doesn't have to be, like you said, just the one way, this is how we do it, and this is it, and if we don't do it this way, then we're not going to, no, I mean, everyone really has their own open idea of how to reach people, and I think that's what makes the show so classic and just so pretty much ahead of its time. I will definitely yeah, say yeah. Time. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. You know, G- Jesus said, if I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So Absolutely. it doesn't matter you know, how you're lifting them up. It's, you know, sometimes you lift them up through hip hop. Sometimes you lift them up uh, as Kim would do with a tutu. You know what I mean? Sometimes <laughs> you lift them up as Leandria would do in the streets, you know, ministering to prostitutes. Sometimes you yeah. lift them up as Corey would as a, as a police officer. Sometimes you lift them up as I do in, in a more unconventional and radical way. Uh, meeting people where they're at. And so we all do it in our own way. But like you said, as long as Christ is lifted up, right. he's going to draw all men unto him, all women unto him. And and that ultimately is what it's all about, is, is just sharing the love of God and making that famous. Absolutely. So how often do they usually have you guys shooting? So we actually filmed the season uh, back in the, in last summer and, and uh, fall. And it took about two months, I would say, maybe a little longer, just for like some extra scenes. Uh, and then they've been editing since then, mm-hmm. and then now it's, of course, on television. So we're already done with all the filming. Right. It was going to actually air in October, but it got pushed back um, mm-hmm. a few months, which is actually good because we were we were going to be competing with Empire, and I really don't want to compete yeah, with Empire. Yeah, so. I don't think <laughs> anybody wants that competition. Yeah, I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to do that. So uh, it kind of worked out in our favor to, to wait a few months, and I think this is the right timing for it, but... Um, but yeah, you know, we've already done the filming, and, and you know, it was intense. It was definitely something different than I've ever done. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very grateful for the opportunity, and it's been a it's been a ride that that, that I appreciate. Absolutely. Now, be it that this is a brand new sector in entertainment for you, what have you learned so far from this experience? 
for me, I've learned that you can, well, first of all, you can't take anything too serious, no matter who's saying what to you. And, and for, for example, I've always been in the limelight. I've always been in the public eye, but this has definitely put me on a different level. Right. And so you have people come out of the woodworks that are going to say things to you that are extreme. And you have to be able to be grounded and not take either too serious. You know, some right. people tell me uh, that I'm the devil or that I'm deceived or that I'm the Illuminati or that yeah. I should kill myself or that I suck or whatever. I, you hear those things yeah. all day. Yeah. But for every one person that says that, there's a thousand that say, you know, that they that they, they love you, they support you. Um, I've got somebody that said they're going to tattoo me on their body. <laughs> so, <it's> like, <laughs> so you have you have people on all sides, and you can't take either reality serious. You have to kind of be in the middle. Yeah. Say, you know what? I'm I'm just a guy that loves God, that's on fire for people, and that wants to affect my community. And so I, I think I've learned how to be grounded in that. But I've also learned that. Um, you know, I don't always have to be perfect. I don't always have to display this facade that pastors for so long have displayed. I can be real. And that's reality TV is supposed to show. It's supposed to show a real side of your life. And it's not always going to be perfect. It's not, not always going to be pretty, but at least it'll be authentic. And that's what I always promise my friends and my fans is that, you know, you might see something about me that you don't agree with or that you don't understand. But you can always know that I'm going to be real. I'm always going to be authentic. Right. And that that is just me to the core. And I'm me no matter where I go. You know, if I'm on television or if I'm at the food bank, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm me and I'm, I'm ministering uh, in the best way that I can. Absolutely, dude. I love it, love it, love it. All right. So we're going to jump into Gwinnett Relay. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Judah is, of course, one of our featured performers for Gwinnett Relay 2016. <laughs> Judah, what can the crowd expect this year? You're on the main stage. You know, we're geared up. We're purpled out. You know, we're coming in for a celebration. I cannot wait um, to to actually see you live. This will be my first time actually seeing you live and on a stage. So I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm super stoked for it. And, I've, you know, I've done, I've done Relay for a few years now. I've done the Gwinnett uh, two years in a row. Yeah. And it's just like... Gwinnett is the bomb, man. Like it is. it is so many amazing people that come out, and the energy there is just uplifting. Like just being in the atmosphere in general is already like a ministry in itself. But uh, with my performance, you can expect a lot of fun. You can expect some hip hop. You can expect some inspiration. Um, I like to be interactive with the crowd, so we're going to be dancing. We're going to be jumping around. We're going we're to be having fun. <laughs> uh, but I also hope to, to inspire somebody and help them know that they're not alone in the fight. Mm-hmm. And to help them know that, you know, when we come together, we can be one one unit. We can be one family. And although we go through hell sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, there is a heaven on the other side. And, and I believe that, you know, ultimately, if, if we keep pushing, I think we're going to find uh, that we that we can beat this, this horrible disease. And it, it can no longer have power over us. And, you know, I even had a, a friend uh, just last week that died, that passed away from cancer. And, and mm-hmm. so it's just such a, it's such a horrible thing right now and and we have to be able to be there for each other and we can't have all the answers we don't know you know what to say to somebody when they're going through that other than i love you and i'm here for you and uh i've got your back and i think that's what relay is all about is that we're, we're here for you we love you we got your back and you're not in this alone so with my performance it's just us connecting together me connecting with the audience and us forming a bond and and uh a movement that we are not only going to fight this thing, but we're going to win. That's right. That is absolutely right. So you guys out there that's listening, May the 13th, 2016, it goes down Gwinnett Relay. It happens at the Gwinnett Fairgrounds in Lawrenceville, GA. Judah's going to hit the stage. We're going to have a schedule and everything set up. Looking forward to that, Judah. Um, I actually attended last year, um, not the whole time, but I, I went through last year and I words cannot express um, just the energy that's there. Like when people ask me, well, what's it, yeah. you know, what's the relay? Why? What's, what's going to relay? Like, I can't describe it to you. It's like nothing out of this world that you've ever seen. Uh-huh. Yeah. This is yeah, the yeah, yeah. world. This is the world's largest relay event. Right, people travel right, from right. all over the world to come for this one celebration for survivors, for people that are going through, for, for those that have passed on. And it's just an incredible experience that you cannot walk away from unchanged. It's impossible. No, I, to- I, I, to- I totally agree. And it's, you know, it, it, it's an honor to be a part of it. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's something I take a lot of pride in because, 
you know, like I said, if, if we can, if we're not affecting someone with our music, if we're not lifting someone up, then, then what are we doing? We're, 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 you know, we're wasting time. And so mm-hmm. for me, I want to be the light, man. And if I can be the light for someone there, even if it's one light, if it's one person that feels hope or one person that feels inspired, then it's all worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Judah. So in 50, 60 million years from now, what do you want people to remember about Judah? I want to remember, I want them to remember that I was someone who shaped history and I did it in a way that, uh, influenced people to be themselves and to be proud of who they are and to live their life in love, to love God, to love the people around them and to love themselves. I want to be someone who stood for equality. Mm. I want to be someone who stood for, uh, uh, you know, self-confidence. And I want to be someone who stood for love. And at the end of the day, that's what I live my life to do. Um, I, I do want to be a pioneer. I consider myself a pioneer. I consider myself a revolutionary. I consider myself someone who is going to shape history. And I've done it already a little bit. Yeah. But if you could see my, you could see my vision board in my house, you would laugh. <laughs> because I, the things that I want to accomplish, if, I'm even, if I even gain 1% of those things, then it'll be a magical life. So, but at the end of the day, it's not about what I can accomplish. It's about who I can touch, who I can uh, inspire. So I want to be a figure like Martin Luther King. I want to be a figure like Gandhi. I want to be a figure uh, like Jesus himself. And Jesus himself said that we're not going to only do the things that he did, but we're going to do greater things. Mm -hmm. And it it almost sounds blasphemous when you say it, but Jesus himself said it. So he encouraged us to go out into the world and do amazing things with our lives. And I want people to remember me but not just me, the movement that I stand for. And I want this to be an idea that can never be killed. Absolutely. All right, Judah, do we have any collaborations that we can, we can talk about any upcoming shows? Maybe well, definitely, uh, definitely uh, Canton, Canton Jones and I have a song that we're releasing and we saw a little bit of, of that last week on, on the oxygen uh, on our show, Preachers of Atlanta. You saw a little bit of us putting a song together. But we're going to actually release it. it. It's super dope. I'm very excited about it. Um, we're putting together some shows together. I'm, I've got some shows I'm going to be putting together on my, for myself. And uh, I, I don't know. There's a lot of new music that's going to come out for me that I really am excited uh, for the people to hear. I've got some stuff on iTunes and on my YouTube and stuff like that. But some of that's about a year or two old. Mm-hmm. So I'm ready for, uh, you know, and it's good stuff. But you know how an artist, if you're an artist, like you're already moved on by the time you even release mm-hmm. a record. <laughs> for me, I'm like, I'm so ready and excited to put out this new music. And I think it's going to, it's going to help some people. And, and uh, I think they're going to enjoy it. So um, definitely look out for me and Kjo and uh, look out for some couple other producers. I got some platinum producers that I'm, I'm working with. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be big. Awesome. Awesome. And last but certainly not least, what advice would you offer to any person that aspires to join the industry as you've done? Um, how you've, you know, you've taken music and ministry hand in hand. You know, like you said, there it's a package deal, and that is that is your ministry. It, you know, is through music. What advice would you offer to any person that that aspires to do what you're doing? Well, first, I would say, you know, the entertainment industry is a beast. It's not, it's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. If you want to get in this industry, you've got to be passionate. You've got to know who you are. You've got to know that you're here for a reason because there's going to be people that try to chew you up and spit you out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you're passionate about it, it'll sustain you. And so I think that you need to be able to focus. You need to be able to focus your passion and master one thing, and then that will allow you to do all things. You know, sometimes we want to be a jack of all trades, but we become a master of none. And I've tried to do that in my life before. And what you end up doing is you do like you do like fifteen different things, but you do them all kind of like halfway. Yeah. And I think if we focus on one thing, become the best at that thing in your category, whether that's music, or if that's painting, or if that's uh, writing, or maybe it's not even maybe it's not even in the entertainment industry. Maybe you're a lawyer or a real estate agent, or you're a doctor, or you're a politician. Wherever you're at, do what you do so well that someone has to pay you to do it. But do it not because you want to be paid. Do it because you love it. And I think if you find that that balance, and if you find that in between stage, then you'll never you'll never go you'll never lose because even if you don't get paid, you're at least doing what you love. But I also want to say to the entrepreneurs out there, don't ever be afraid to get a job. Sometimes it's okay to get a job and help pay for your dream. Uh, you know, it's, it's, sometimes we, we say, "Well, I can only be paid by music." Well, no, 
I've been paid by a lot of different streams of income, yeah. but it's important to focus on your dream, get passionate, but also be able to have something that funds you along the way. And I think if you do that and if you master that, uh, you'll be able to do all things. Because if you build your brand, then whatever your product is, people will buy it. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of us have so many products. We have books, we have songs, we have television shows, we have t-shirts, we have whatever we have. But if our brand is not built, no one cares. Right. You have to build, you have to focus on building your brand. Make people fall in love with your brand. Sell your brand. And then you can sell, literally, you can sell a coffee mug. You can sell your own line mm -hmm. of gum. You know what I mean? You can sell, you yeah. can sell a tea. Whatever you want to do, look at Doug Dynasty, man. These guys blew up and they sold, <laughs> you know, car mats and stuff. So, whatever you're at, man, build your brand, focus on your brand, be passionate about it, and then the products will come and the people will come. But if you're not passionate, nobody else will, man. So, yeah. be passionate, focus, master, and then you can do all things. But do what you love and do it so well that someone will pay you to do it and you'll never lose. Awesome sauce. All right, spoken from the man himself, Judah. I love you to pieces. I'm so very proud of you, and I, and I continue to be a supporter of the movement. Thank you. <laughs> I, I definitely, I can't wait to, to finally meet you. May 13, 2016, we're going to be here in that main at Center State. I hope each and every one of you are out there checking out this show. Judah, much more success to you, brother. I appreciate you so very much. And, I, you know, I will see you out there in cyber world. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to May 13th, and uh, thank you for having me on the show. And for everybody out there, follow me at Official Judah uh, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now Periscope. Or you can go to OfficialJudah.com, and it'll connect you with all that good stuff. Ash, I love you. I appreciate the support. I love everybody out there, and, and I will see you at Relay for Life. That's right. I'll see you guys soon. All Thanks right. so much, Judah. Peace. Uh...